morning. Welcome to our January Connect Sunday. Uh, so glad you're here uh, in the church auditorium this morning. We're going to be gathering around tables so that we can uh, discuss a topic together and talk with one another face to face in small groups. And it's something that we do uh, the third Sunday of every month, our Connect services. And my hope is that you will be able to join us in person for our next one in February. Uh, but if you're unable to be with us, uh, you can still participate right where you're at this morning. Um, on these Connect Sundays, our, our aim is to encourage one another and build one another up, as Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Uh, my hope is that the Kingsway Church uh, family, that we're strengthened, that we're encouraged uh, as we have a discussion together today. <clears throat> During this uh, second week of January, we've been focusing on starting the new year with prayer. And we had prayer gatherings on Sunday and Wednesday and Friday of this week, uh, praying for various needs uh, in our church family, um, in our community, needs in our community, and even needs uh, all around the world. We've been praying for some big things. And for today's Connect service, we'll be finishing the week of prayer by discussing a few questions with those who you are sitting with, who you're home with. Um, or if you're not with anyone, then for you to think about on your own. We're going to be talking about prayer. Uh, a long time pillar of the Foursquare Church community, our denomination, uh, was Pastor Jack Hayford. And he passed away, actually, just at the beginning of this week. And he had a lot to say about prayer and listening to the Holy Spirit over the years of his ministry. And a one, little, one little quote stood out to me this week as I was reading. He said, prayer is invading the impossible. I like to think of prayer as welcoming, uh, God welcoming us to join with him in agreeing for his best for people all around us in their lives and his best in our world. Uh, whether praying for maybe seemingly very small, insignificant things or invading the impossible, praying for big things. God asks us to team up with him and, uh, and, and he wants to use us and, and, and work through us, even through our, our great faith or the little faith that we have. Maybe we've only got a little bit of faith. God wants to use your faith and he wants us to trust him with it uh, to facilitate discussion uh, about prayer this morning each of the groups in the auditorium the church auditorium they will be answering some questions together at their tables and i will hope i hope that you will take some time to answer them as well uh, among the people who are watching with you like i said or in your living room or if you're alone then just take some time to con contemplate them on your own uh, here are some of the questions we'll be discussing today. Um, first of all, on a scale of 1 to 10, um, with 10 being the highest, how would you rate your time spent talking with God this week? Think about that. Where was I talking with God? How much, maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't a great week. Maybe, maybe you spent a lot of time talking with God. How would you rate that? Um, another question is, what, what keeps people from praying on a regular basis? What are some specific ways um, we can overcome those kind of challenges that stop us from praying? We're going to be reading uh, uh, two verses from the book of Exodus, so I hope you have a Bible handy. Grab a Bible. <clears throat> um, Exodus 5. It's, it's, it's where Moses is talking to God, praying to God, and he's very honest, and he's very like, God, where are you? Why haven't you done anything? Sort of prayer, very honest prayer. And so I'm gonna, I've got a question for us about our honesty with God and our feelings with God. Um, I've got a question for us about uh, describing a time when God answered a prayer, an important prayer in your life. Um, another question is about what, what kind of, what do you typically pray about when you do pray uh, in those moments? Um, and then the, the final question is, what are the needs in your life currently? that other people could pray for and agree with you about. When I was growing up, when I was a little kid, uh, I noticed that the pastor and my parents and some other people in our, in our church, 
they would always um, pray uh, end their prayers with, in Jesus' name, amen. And as a kid, I didn't think too much about it, but it sort of seemed like a magic formula for prayers, to end prayers. And it wasn't until years later that I read in the Bible that it was Jesus himself who told us to pray in his name. He said to his friends in John chapter 14, he says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. It seems like Jesus is saying uh, that prayer given in his name is, is guaranteed to be answered. Uh, but that idea has kind of been misused a lot. Um, some people pray in that way in order to kind of force God's approval on their prayers, uh, attempting to uh, invoke his authority uh, on any and every action we desire. Um, prosperity preachers will, will declare financial blessing in Jesus' name, and, and uh, fraudulent faith healers sometimes will command sickness to flee in Jesus' name. Now, now those things can happen in miraculous instances, for sure. But the key to praying in the name of Jesus is your heart and your motivation. The book of James gives us a dire warning about our prayer, saying, when you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasure, he goes on to say. In other words, we can be selfish in prayer, we're human. We can be selfish. Yet Jesus still calls us to pray in his name. And in doing so, it's two things when we pray in his name. One, it's an acknowledgement of his intercession with us. I love this. In, in, in the book of Romans and 1 John and Hebrews, it says that Jesus became our intercessors, our intercessor and our advocate to the Father. He's, he's on your side. And so praying in his name is to acknowledge that Christ is the only way to the Father. Our righteous standing is only through Jesus. So we come to the Lord in prayer in Jesus' name, not because of our merit, not because of anything good in us, but because that he is good. So we can pray in the name of Jesus. The second thing that, that goes with this, this in the name of Jesus prayer is it is submission to his will to pray in Jesus' name. Uh, it's not a magic formula. It's saying, Jesus, I pray and I submit to your authority and to your ruling in this need that I'm praying for. I know you hear me, so please answer in your will. Uh, we don't twist Jesus' arm in answering uh, our requests by using the phrase in Jesus' name. We bring our requests to him in humble submission. That's why we pray in Jesus' name. So now, now take take 30 minutes or so. Um, go through the all the questions or some of the questions that we've given you today. They'll be on the screen. Um, and 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 I pray that you would take time at the end in your small group or on your own to pray together for the needs in your life, the needs of those around you, uh, and pray in Jesus' name. God bless you today. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday.